In this series of videos, I'm going to talk about some of the methods that I use to 3D model and print O-scale traction cars. Uh, in this first video, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, system specs and software and how you actually draw the models in real size. Here are the specifications for the PC that I use. This PC is about four years old, so high-end equipment, while nice, isn't necessarily needed. The system is comprised of a first generation Intel Core i7-860, 8GB of RAM, a slightly newer NVIDIA GeForce uh, GTX 660, 120GB uh, SSD main hard drive, 1TB uh, mechanical hard drive, and uh, I'm running Windows 8.1. So this isn't exactly the most high-end system, but it does get the job done. Uh, the SSD isn't required per se for anything special, it just makes things a little bit, a little bit faster. Uh, the software that I'm using, aside from Windows 8.1, is SketchUp 8.0. I'm sticking with SketchUp 8.0 as uh, my plugins work a little bit better. Uh, MeshLab uh, version 1.3.2 for uh, taking those a, uh, SketchUp files and converting them to STL files. And lastly, for uh, viewing and everything, I use a, a triple monitor setup which consists of three monitors, uh, the center monitor being a uh, 1080p flanked by uh, two lower res monitors. Here's a photo of the uh, triple monitor setup that's currently set up in my home office. Uh, again, the 1080p monitor is in the center flanked by the two lower res monitors on either side. With this setup, I can have SketchUp in the center monitor while the two flanking monitors can have uh, either photos of the cars that I'm modeling or plans that I've digitized uh, of the cars. I found over time that actually taking the paper plans and either scanning them or taking a digital photo seems to make working with them a lot easier. So what I'll do is actually take a set of blueprints or whatever and either scan it and using a normal flatbed scanner or actually just take a photo of the uh, plan with my DSLR and convert that to a file or a JPEG which then I can put on one of the monitors and really zoom in and take my time and really get into the AI uh, and really get in close with that particular plan. It makes working with that a lot easier than trying to fumble a lot of papers I've found over time. Here's just some samples of uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, again I just take these plans and either take a digital photo or just scan it. Uh, these first two are digital photos, and this last one is actually a scan of some of my sketches. Again, with these, I've just found it a lot easier to work with them when they're next to the actual SketchUp screen. Okay, let's get started. Uh, again, going back to what I said before, I'm using uh, SketchUp 8.0. There are newer versions, but I just prefer this particular version as it works a little bit better with some of the uh, plugins that I use. I think the integration with the SketchUp University, which is an online resource of various plugins, seems to be a little bit more seamless and works a whole lot better than in SketchUp 15. Uh, your mileage may vary, but you can use whatever you want. The basic tools and processes are pretty much the same between all the various versions. Supposedly SketchUp 15 works a little bit better, but I haven't seen a great improvement in performance on either product. So for now, I am just going to go stick with uh, SketchUp uh, 8 for now. Uh, one day I probably will upgrade because I'll probably stop supporting this. So when that comes, I'll do what I have to do. In this video, we're just going to draw a uh, car end and I want to show you how I actually draw all my items in real size to begin with. It just makes it a whole lot easier as you're going to be working off a set of planes usually and actually making the parts full size just makes SketchUp work a whole lot easier. And then with that I'll show how you'll take those parts and turn them into groups which is critical for making the process function. And also how to take those groups and then uh, shrink them down to O scale size so they can be printed. Okay, let's get started in SketchUp. So what we're going to do is, since we're drawing in full size, everything will be exactly as your blueprints say. So I'm going to draw a line that's uh, 8 foot 6 inches long, typical for a Chicago L car. And we'll add some depth to it, uh, still in two dimensions, about 3 inches here. Uh, basically, you could also use a rectangle tool. I just like using the uh, line tools. 
Uh, next off, let's make that front curve for our anti-climber. I'm going to make that a foot out. I use a uh, guides a lot. It's a little tape measure tool. I strongly recommend using these. They, it works fantastic. So uh, now I'm going to use the arc tool and make that front arc of the anti-climber. Uh, we'll get rid of that center line. Uh, we'll actually pull it up there and we'll give it that typical width of six inches. Uh, so now we have basically a, uh, a nice little front of the car. Make it a little wider. Okay, now that we have the anti-climber finished, uh, let's go ahead and make some guides that are going to put uh, where we want to put the uh, front of the car. So I'll draw a line that uh, designates the center of the uh, anti-climber. Draw some more guides that will make where we want to put our walls, or actually the ends of the car. Uh, again, use guides a lot. They're going to save you a lot of time, makes it very easy to do. I'm going to make that front center panel, uh, I think about two feet, or about a, uh, 30 inches wide, so 15 inches on each side. Uh, make that there. Using these guides, then we'll draw the lines that designate the end of the car. Now here is where it's very important to realize that eventually this will be an O scale model. You have to, while you're drawing in real size, you have to account for the fact that this will be shrunk down to uh, print limitations. So I have a tendency to make my walls three inches scale thick. Why three inches? Because when that's shrunk down to O scale, it's a pretty decent thickness of about uh, eight thousandths of an inch that works pretty well with uh, SketchUp. So that's how you have to keep in the back of your head that while this you're drawing full size, eventually you will be making a model. So now from those lines, I can extrude using the push-pull tool to get the actual end of the car. I did it seven feet, that's a little uh, short for a real car, but again, we're just kind of uh, playing along here. Uh, I like to get rid of some of the extra uh, lines or the guides just to clear off things up. So now what we're gonna do is uh, draw the end windows. So again, I'll go say like 40 inches high, some make up some kind of number. So now I'll just extend it up a little bit, make it a little bit more prototypical. <clears throat> Again, I like to use these guides a lot because it really uh, enables you to give your a, uh, give you something to draw off of. And again, since you're going off of plans, it makes it really easy to make things very exact. So again, uh, about you know six, to f you know four to six inches on either side, make a little a uh, nice little frame around the windows eventually. So once I get these all drawn, then I'll actually use a rectangle tool as then will be a lot easier to draw. So then we'll draw a rectangle on the one side and eventually follow up by a rectangle on the other side. Again, I'm following these guides that I used. Uh, again, make sure you draw your guides on the faces of these uh, particular items so you're actually a, uh, know what you're doing. Again, I'll get rid of extra guides just to kind of uh, tidy things up. Now we'll do the center section. Again, same measurements uh, as before, just to keep a, uh, every, obviously everything uh, the same. Uh, again, more guides. You know, you get to really use guides as you'd be, you know, you, it's, you live or die by them. Again, draw your rectangle. So now you have your four windows. Now using the push-pull tool, once we get clean some things up here, you can actually just uh, push it in and we'll actually create an opening. So now I basically have a car end done. And that took all of less than, you know, two minutes. So the problem is this is just one end that's comprised of a bunch of different components. It's very hard to work with. So what you do is you select everything and then you're going to make this a group. So now once this is a group, the whole item becomes one piece. Uh, so now if you want to move it, you can just click on the move tool and actually you can drag the entire thing around. But more importantly, what this does is lets you use the scale tool. So I select my group, select the tool scale, and then you know from opposite corner, what you're going to do is you're going to scale this down to O scale, which is zero or zero point zero two zero eight three 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 three. You're going to add that, and now your part magically shrinks down to O scale. And then what I can do then is zoom in, and we'll get there in a second there. And I got the a, uh, the SketchUp lady in the way, so that's why I'm not going in all the way. So let's get rid of her, and I'll do my uh, camera zoom extents. And now you'll see my part is now in O scale. So this is perfect now. I can take this off and set up the shape be printed. So we'll measure this, and you'll actually see this is now three inches tall. And in that short of time, we made a traction car end.
I know I went pretty fast on that last part, but again, hopefully just get the idea. The fact of the matter is that we want to work in uh, groups, so it makes the actual models work a lot better. So here's a uh, picture of my uh, METCAR, 2800 series METCAR that is currently a work in progress. And when I select the tool, you'll see that the entire part is, comp is one gigantic group. So when I explode this, you'll see that it's made out of actually component groups that now I can move around. And this is actually the, you know, the real reason why you want to work in groups. That way you can take, you, you know, it'll make, number one, it'll make SketchUp work a whole lot easier. And then it'll just make your uh, computer work a whole lot better as it doesn't have to chug so much calculations of drawing all these in individual lines. And again, you can just take these parts, assemble them into models. Uh, so that kind of wraps up. This will wrap up this video for now. And I'll put out a part two to explore some of the other uh, items and issues that I've come across. Uh, how to, you know, export these to uh, Mesh Labs that will convert us to SDL and upload to SketchUp and some of the other issues I've run into while trying to create these particular models. Uh, so stay tuned for part two. Thank you.